Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guest here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. We have Melissa Lancaster on the show with us. She's coming to us all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. She's a bodybuilder. She's also a personal trainer. But most importantly, she's in Oklahoma, so that brings me up to my first question. <laughs> what is the weather like in Oklahoma right now? Well, today it's pretty cold for us. It's 24 degrees. <laughs> And I've been freezing all day. Yesterday was bad because of the wind, and then today's colder, but the wind's not as bad, so it's actually better. So I'm in Minnesota, as everyone is well aware of from all these podcasts. It is negative 27 where I am at right now, and it was negative 55 wind chill. But I have a very interesting story off of that. So actually, the wind chill, it was almost to negative 60 last night, and I have a job where I work at UPS, and I'm a supervisor. So every night, the supervisors, four of us, we have to go out into the yard and check all of the trailers and make sure that there's no packages or anything in there. So mm-hmm. I, I spent half an hour last night out in negative 60 degree wind chill, checking trailers, making sure that everything was good. It was definitely an experience. I mean, I had, let's see what I had. I had five layers of upper body stuff on of coats and jackets. Wow. I had four layers of pants on. I had three layers of socks with two hand warmers or two feet warmers on each foot. And then I had like a small shoe and then I had a boot on top of the shoe. I had three things of gloves on. And then I had, so, and I still had to write stuff down. So my handwriting was absolutely horrible, but I had three things for my head that covered up my entire head. And then I had a big, one of those like uh, Russian hats that cover up your entire oh, head yeah. too. And then I had my sweater hood on top of that too. I lit- I mean, I was perfectly normal just because I was so covered up where literally the only thing that was visible was like that much of my eyes. So I could barely see like in front of me. But even then, I mean, I was freezing and we had one guy who was just stupid enough. He only brought out one pair of gloves and he lasted about five seconds before he turned around and then, and then went back wow. inside because he couldn't hit. But yeah, that is, that is freezing where even my eyelashes were freezing together even after being out there for like five minutes. Cause that's, that's one of those where when we, we did a challenge where if you were to spit in the air, it turns into, it turns into an icicle before it touches the ground. Oh, I bet so. I can yeah, imagine. It, I it, saw people today throwing water in the air yep. in Chicago, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just about as bad there as it is here, but yeah, it's a, but luckily we only got t- tonight, so I got to go out and do that again tonight, so that should be interesting, and then and then Ooh. tomorrow it's going to be a little bit warmer, so it should be better. But now, so we already depressed everyone, you know, already in the opening. But Melissa, why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what inspired you to make that change and adapt that healthy and fit lifestyle? Okay, I was uh, staying at home. I had my second child, and I was staying at home with her. I took a year off of work and. Needless to say, the weight was like piling on because I was staying at home and not working anymore, and I was wasn't active. I had always played soccer my whole life, and so I had just stopped for a little bit to take off. And then I saw some ladies jogging in my neighborhood one day, and I was all depressed because <laughs> I was. When you stay at home, you kind of lose contact with all your friends and everything, and you're just kind of, while they're at work and stuff. And you lose your work family, and you're just alone. You kind of feel lonely. So I saw them running one day, and then I found out that they were running through a Fleet Feet store, which is basically like a running store in our neighborhood, and you could sign up and join a jogging. It's called Jogging Moms. So I just joined that and started running 5Ks again, but it wasn't really helping my weight come off. And so I joined a gym and uh, met my trainer. I just picked his name because he had the same name. My daughter's nickname was his nickname, so I picked him, and our personality, like, matched up, and he kind of motivated me, and so ever since then, I just, I started losing weight like crazy. It was, um, I lost 50 pounds, so it just kind of took over, (laughs) and then I became addicted. (laughs) <laughs> I, and that's and that's so awesome. And I always love to make the statement that you know, if you were to walk into a gym with a hundred people, there's a hundred different ways as to how those people got into shape. Whether it comes down to, I mean, their diet, their nutrition, their training, mm-hmm. how many reps they do, what exercise they do. I mean, there's so many little things that add up to the package that people end up seeing. Was that a difficulty for you when you got started with the weight training? I mean, even though you had a trainer, which I mean is such a huge help, and I highly recommend you know everyone get a trainer if you don't know what you're doing, especially because that that can mean all the difference in the world. But still, was that a struggle for you sort of finding out what worked best for your body to get the best results that you wanted because I always like to say if you were to walk up to someone and say like hey that body part of yours looks amazing like what did you do to get it to look like that what worked best for them 99% of the time isn't going to work as good for you exactly and um, what I started off doing I had just joined like a group type fitness mm-hmm. so we were just doing a lot of high intensity cardio type stuff and then what really changed for me was they changed the program to be a um 
weight training as well as diet. And I, oh, you should have seen me. Like, I don't want to lift weights. I don't, <laughs> I didn't want to do it. And I did, and my body just took on a whole new turn. So, I, like you said, everything, a lot of stuff works different for a lot of different people. Um, for me, weight training was key. It changed my body overnight and it just took off from there. And you were talking about, you know, how you didn't want to get into weights. And that brings me up to, I mean, one of the stereotypes that I love to bust because, I mean, it's gotten better the last five years with Instagram, just that knowledge being spread out. But there are still a significant amount of women that have that fear. You know, if they touch that one weight, they're just going to hulk out, you know, put on 50 pounds of muscle overnight. And, you know, I always say to that, if that ever happened to someone, I would sign them up to become my personal trainer. That, that day and night, I would pay them my entire life savings because they have found the secret that, you know, so many people want, but I know you said that you maybe might have had that fear starting out, but now, even when you hear that from just people, just your average gym goer, what is your main response to that? What do you like to tell them? I tell them that there's no way that'll happen. You have to eat the correct amount of food. <laughs> you would have to eat an enormous amount of food to grow, to hulk out, as they call it, um, so quick. I mean, I've been weightlifting for five years and I still look pretty feminine. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. That's what you had any idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I say, I always say, like, look at our guests. It's like, yeah, they don't look like it. And it's like they've been working out for that long. And it, they just don't realize the hard work and dedication that people have to go through to even get into a look that's even close to that. I mean, it's just such a process. And, you know, I always love to say one of the stories that I love to talk about is one of my friends, you know, when I was in college, she would always come up to me when I was, you know, getting bigger and stronger. And she would say, like, oh, my God, you know, I want to come. I want to go to the gym with you, but I'm just afraid I don't want to get too bulky. And then I mm -hmm. finally just had said one night, I said, look, the amount of weight that you carry in your purse when we go out to clubs or when we go out to eat weighs more than a lot of the dumbbells <laughs> in the gym. And you are not getting an ounce of muscle from lugging that thing around 24 seven. She goes, oh, my God, yeah, you're right. So that's that convinced her. And then she was like going to the gym and then she really saw those changes. So, I mean, and I always tell everyone else that I have on, it's like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to get healthier. But the biggest thing, I think, especially for women, it does so much more than I think it does for men, is the confidence boost that you get from working out and from, you know, getting bigger and stronger, just feeling that you can accomplish more. And that's one of those things that you can carry on from working out to just your average everyday life. How has that confidence boost helped you in other aspects of your life other than just the working out? It's helped me be a better mom and a better wife and better at my job. I'm an accountant during the day. Um, and it just gives me a boost, like just walking around. Um, I really, at first I was very, I used to be very, very, very shy and I wouldn't really talk to people and unless they talked to me first. And now I'm kind of coming out of that and just getting more confident. And even in my weight training, um, I, when I first started going to the gym, I'm just, I was just like anybody else. I was nervous. I didn't want to, I was real shy, timid. So I would just do cardio. And now that I just, the, longer that I've practiced doing it over and over. Now I'm confident I can walk into any gym, even if I don't know anybody and I don't really care. I'll lift or whatever. Well, yeah, absolutely. Me a lot. Yeah. I mean, that is just a huge thing that a lot of people, I mean, just don't realize that, but it's one of the benefits that you get when you start. And one of my favorite questions is because, you know, everyone's body is so different. Everyone has different genetics. So when you got started with the, like serious weight training, was one body part that really, really took off for you that you don't have to train as much now? And everyone always has that one body part that just legs behind <laughs> that. I mean, they have to train to overdrive. I mean, for me, my back, yes. my back, I mean, is just naturally built where I can, you know, I don't have to work it out as much, but I'm also six, three. So my legs and my lower body are just, they're not, they're, they're not a good sight to see. I mean, I had that pitcher's body where, you know, you had to be a little bit longer and leaner. So I'm still trying to catch up with that. But what are those body parts for you when you started out? Um, the body part that took off the most was my shoulders, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I I do train them a lot now just because it's my favorite body mm -hmm. part to train. Uh, and the one that lags the most would have to be my legs, believe it or not, even though I've played soccer for 32 years. <laughs> they, it's, I mean, they're very muscular, but they don't keep up with my shoulders. Yep. So I look, I used to look unproportionate mm -hmm. for a while. I'm mm -hmm. finally getting symmetrical, mm -hmm. and it has taken... <laughs> Four years of nonstop lifting, lifting heavy, and I'm still, you know, of course, I still have stuff I need to work on, but. Yeah, and, and when I got to say, I mean, my biggest pet peeve is the people that just have the huge calves just genetically because <laughs> that is one thing that I will never achieve. So I always say, you know, I could do 10,000 calf raises every day. I could inject pure muscle into my calves and they wouldn't grow. I mean, it's, it is just such a weird thing. So, and then you see those people that, yeah, you know, they've never done it a day in their life. That is probably one of the most genetic things. But at what point in your journey, how long did it take you before you said like, hey, I, I might want to do like a bodybuilding show. That sounds like that would be something that would that would be cool. Um, it was probably 
two years into after me going to the gym and starting, as soon as we started the weight training and the diet, and basically our the diet was just kind of now it's my everyday lifestyle. But I had never eaten like that before. I, I'm from the South. Obviously, we eat a lot of fried stuff here. Um, I would have never thought to eat Greek yogurt or to mix it with and make a pancake out of it. Okay. <laughs> so that, as soon as I started doing all that, my body just changed. And everyone kept asking me, are you going to do a show? Are you going to do a show? And I thought, what? On stage in a bikini? Like, There's no way you're out of your mind. I'm 36 years old. Uh, that's never happening and it people kept asking and saying that I should do it I might I would probably win so one day I just went up to my coach and asked and he said there's a show in 10 weeks and I signed up and I I only prepped for 10 weeks and I got second that that's amazing a 10 week prep and you still get second I mean that's that's really awesome and that I mean you sort of answered it a little bit but I always still love to ask you know people don't realize just to be able to get into shape to go into a prep takes so much hard work and dedication that yes. I mean it's unfathomable but going on a prep that is notching things up to such an extreme level where I mean you got to get all of your workouts done you got to eat the right amount of food constantly like you cannot you can cheat maybe a couple of times but that's you know when your body really is really right. is asking for it but I mean and just eating at the right time period too the time eating is so important mm -hmm. as well what was that experience like from you going to your you know like you said your southern way of eating to now going to a strict prep life style of eating it was i enjoyed it because it was so strict i'm one of those if you give me a little bit of lead way i tend to go overboard so the stricter it is the better it is for me so it actually worked out and um i've gone through six preps now so after the first one, you know, you learn more about your body each time. And that's what I enjoyed was I was, I was learning um, what foods worked with my body and what foods didn't. Because if you had asked me before, I would have never have cut anything out. But during prep, you have to cut out some things like peanut butter. And I would have never known that peanut butter disagreed with my body had I never cut it out. But then when you started adding it back in, you realize, oh, man, that's what hurts my stomach. I didn't know this whole time. So, you know, I learned. Every prep I've learned so much, and I enjoy that part of it. Uh, but it was kind of hard. Being the main thing is everything we do here socially is based around food. Mm -hmm. So my family functions, anything like that, we're at a restaurant. For me to take my food into the restaurant was kind of hard. Mm -hmm. And going to my parents, um, a lot of people get offended mm -hmm. if you don't eat the food they cook. So then you have to explain it, and <laughs> yeah, so that was difficult. That oh was yeah. Challenging. I mean, we've had guests from like Mississippi and Texas and they, yeah, it's the same type thing. So yeah, in the South, I mean, that's, that's so different, but yeah. So it, that, I mean, that just adds on to the pressure as well, but you kind of elaborated too a little bit earlier, but if you were to poll the general public to see, and you'd get such a small singular percentage of people that would basically be willing to go up on stage in a bikini and pose for people. I mean, it takes so much courage. It takes so much determination and drive. Was that a struggle for you to sort of be in that mindset of like, yes, this is something that I can do? Or did it get to a point where, I mean, a lot of our guests come on too and they say, you know, it just gets to a point where you just have worked out so much and you've died and trained that you're just like, I just want to get on stage and, and show it off. Yes. So wh what was that experience like for you? I was very hesitant because I, um, <laughs> I'm very tomboyish. Mm -hmm. And so for me to get up there and try to be very feminine, but then also have muscles, it, it was a challenge. I was really nervous about having the bikini part after a while didn't bother me because we had practiced so much. Um, before I knew it, I was walking around the gym in my bikini to pose. I didn't really care. I had done all this work and I was just to the point, like I didn't even care. I, I just wanted to get it done and I wanted to showcase my hard work, but I wanted to do it right. So it was, it was hard at first. I was very nervous, but after that, after doing it once now, I don't, I don't have a problem at all. Yeah. And it, help, it helps me now just walking around every day. Like I don't care. It's yeah. Well, absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things where I always say, you just got to find that thing in your life that really brings you that much joy and just, just stick with it and follow it. But I mean, what the most surprising answer by far since I've started this entire thing and interviewing, you know, all the bodybuilders that I do is that for 90% of them, the hardest thing is posing. 
It's harder than your nutrition. It's harder than your training. I mean, you if you were to ask the general public, I bet no one would guess that that is the hardest thing for these competitors because they just make it look like it comes so naturally. But it is such a difficulty for so many people. I always like to make the comparison. I mean, you can be a great driver. You can never be a perfect driver. You can be a great poser. You can never be a perfect poser. It's always ever evolving. What has your experience been like with posing? Was it a difficulty for you starting off? And has it gotten any easier since you've started? Posing for me was very difficult. That was the most struggle I had. Um, that was my mental, it was a mental block. I just couldn't fathom walking around in six inch heels in a bikini and trying to be, you know, classy, sexy, and show muscles at the same time because I'm very tomboyish, robotic, if you will. Um, so that was the challenge. I practiced every day. I hired a posing coach. And then after a couple shows, I hired another posing coach so I could get a third pair of eyes on me. Because, you know, it helps to have different sets of eyes to help you see your best angles, where to turn. Nobody looks good straight on, so you're always looking for that good angle and that ways to hide your trouble areas. Um, so <laughs> hiring people outside to take a third eye and look and get their critiquing is what helped me the most. And it has gotten easier. I did notice with my last show, I've had the most confidence on stage than I've ever had before. And I don't know if that was because it was my pro debut, so I had earned my pro card before that. Maybe that helped me gain the confidence. Um, I went into the show differently as well with a different mindset, so that might have helped. But it's definitely gotten a lot easier as the practicing goes on. Yeah, and that's, and that's awesome. But what is your out of all the bikini poses, what is your favorite pose and what is your least favorite? My favorite for me, it just depends on the person. My favorite pose is my side pose, mm -hmm. but that's just me personally because it hides. I'm really short-waisted, mm -hmm. and so I, my waist doesn't come in as much as the other girls who have a great um, glute-to-waist ratio, mm -hmm. so mine's not as prominent. Um, so my side pose shows my abs as well as my glutes mm -hmm. at the same time. Oh, that's awesome. And what is your least favorite? My least favorite pose is, I don't know, I like our back poses. I'm with WBFF, so we don't have to do the bend over pose. Oh, yep. A lot of other organizations do do that. That's my least favorite pose, and yeah. I'm thankful that I don't have to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if you ask my least favorite pose on my body would have to be a, a, my front pose. Mm. I'm, I, I can't find one that I really like yet, so I'm still working on it. Absolutely, and I mean, like with everything, I mean, you the the hardest thing too for so many people is that you have to make it look effortless. When basically you just want to be grunting, basically like that's what your natural body is telling you because you have to be flexing everything at the right amount of time. But yeah, the one positive I do take from a lot of people who say about the back pose is that that's the one time when you can let that smile down for a little bit and just just relax a little bit and be like, yes. okay. I can relax my you face. You can breathe. Yeah, you yeah. can you can breathe and relax your face for a little bit. Yeah, so I mean that's one of the benefits. But you obviously, I mean, you won your pro card. What is that experience like for you? Because for all the audience members out there who aren't aware of, I mean, unless you win the Olympia or unless you become like the next biggest bodybuilder, winning your pro card is the biggest achievement for so many of these competitors because it just gives a validation for all of that hard work that they put into it. It really, it really just puts them into basically a club of sorts. Now you're a pro and you can compete at the pro level. What was that experience like for you? Uh, winning my pro car was amazing. It was one of the best days of my life. Um, I didn't expect to win. I had just came off another show. I went in kind of as a wild card. Nobody knew I was coming. It was the night before my flight got canceled. <laughs> I rolled in seven hours late. I missed the meeting. I mean, there was just so much that went wrong. I totally didn't expect to win because my mindset was just shifted. And it happened and it was, it was amazing. It was a great day. It was just and it. Like you said, it kind of validated a lot of stuff for me in, um, personally, because I have been trying so hard and I was always one place away from getting my pro card. So for five, for four shows, I was just that one place. So to win was it was validating. That's amazing. I mean, I always love hearing those stories because everyone, you know, has their own thing. But one of the things that I mean, I love to talk about because it is not talked about 
as much on Instagram or by a lot of competitors as it should be is I'll give an example. So I was at a New Year's Eve party and one of my friends came up to me and said, you know, like, Ryan, I really love watching your show. It's great. But one of the things that I didn't realize about these competitors is that they aren't able to maintain that look 365 days of the year, that stage look that they have. I mean, that is probably one of the biggest misconceptions that the general public has is because they just see these photos or they just see, you know, like clips of these shows and they think, you know, like, wow, these people just must, that look just must be something that, you know, they can just have because they've worked out so much. People don't realize that that is not a sustainable look. You sort of manipulate your body through all the dieting and working out into a look that you're not going to be able to keep. Was that a struggle for you at first sort of realizing the fact that like all this hard work and all this determination and drive that I put into, you know, months upon months of prepping for this show, I'm not going to be able to keep this look. And has it evolved over time? Has that gotten easier for you to sort of realize like, hey, this look is not attainable for a sustainable amount of time? Absolutely. It was very difficult at first. I, my coach had already prepared me and, you know, but as much preparing as everyone does, it doesn't, it doesn't even touch the fact that until it hits you and you're a month post show and you put on 20 pounds, just like that. And not by doing anything extreme, just by going back to your old ways. And so that, and not doing the cardio that you were doing and working as hard as you were. So that was a struggle um, at first, but it most definitely it has gotten way easier. I have definitely, we have um, each show we have changed my post show rebound um, by our reverse dieting. So you add cars in very slowly. Um, this last show was probably my best rebound ever. Yeah. And my had the best off season I've had. So I'm definitely learning and it's getting a lot easier. Yeah. And that's, and it, like I said, it's all a learning process, just like with everything in life. I mean, it's all about just learning and, you know, correcting the rights and the wrongs and, you know, just finding out what works best for you. But now, I mean, you're also a mom, and I always love to ask, you know, all the moms that we have on our show. I mean, being a mom, that's a full-time job in and of itself. I mean, like you said, you're also an accountant, and then you also do bodybuilding. How are you able to find the time to get all three of those things in? Does it just take an extreme amount of time management, or are there any tips and tricks that you'd like to tell, maybe if any other moms are listening on podcasts, of how you're able to get that time for yourself? Yes, I we, – we do time management basically um uh we prep all of our meals on sundays usually and if we need stuff throughout the week my husband and i he helps out a lot we will prep on a wednesday just cook some more meat if we need it but meal prepping was is the main thing that helps me get all the meals in for the week i need and then prioritizing workouts i just pri- i try to do a lot in the morning before they wake up i'll go and hit the gym once if i need to do cardio and then to lift, I lift after work, and my daughter, my youngest one, just goes with me, and she because she likes the gym, so that helps out a lot. But it's definitely time management. Sometimes if they have practices, um, my oldest and my youngest both play soccer, and well, my oldest doesn't anymore, um, but she did. I would a lot of times go to her practices and do cardio there, and do some other weightlifting stuff. I couldn't do lift weights there, but I can do my other stuff like plyometrics, things like that. Just trying to get in anytime you can. Absolutely. And what have your kids' reactions been like to, you know, having a mom that doesn't look, you know, it looks maybe a little bit different than all the other moms that they're friends with. What has their genuine reactions been like? Well, my oldest is a teenager. So I started when she was probably in seventh grade or eighth grade is when my real change hit. And a lot of people would ask her, is your mom a bodybuilder? <laughs> and she would get embarrassed, you know, but that's kind of. Now she realizes it's health. I'm healthy and fit, and so now she just explains it to everyone. But the youngest, um, she loves it. She does push-ups all the time. <laughs> and now she's into gymnastics, yep. and yep. they're both. It helps. It's honestly helped the most with their eating. My oldest eats really healthy for the most part. She tries not to eat processed food and things, and I don't push that on them. Their kids, I let them eat whatever. I mean, I always ask them to eat a vegetable, but that's not always going to happen. And it's all my oldest has changed and done it on her own. So I, I feel the same will happen with my youngest. She's still mac and cheese and <laughs> chicken nugget kind of girl. But. Yep. Well, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they expect that. But I mean, it's really great to, I mean, have that positive role model for the kids, especially because especially with the way that the generation is going with the obesity crisis. I mean, just having that. And I've had specialists on that come on and they say, you know, like number one thing is, you know, have that positive representation from the parents. If the parents, you know, recommend some healthy alternatives for them. I mean, that's one of the best things that they can do. So, I mean. I mean, yeah, kudos to you. I mean, that's and that's and that's great that you're doing that. But two of the questions that I love to ask all of my health and fitness guests that I have on are, 
are, you know, for the first one, when I started going to the gym, you know, getting bigger and stronger, there's so many positives that happened out of it. But the one negative thing for me is that you're going to get asked to move a lot of people's furniture. You're going to get asked to open a lot of pickle jars. I mean, I'm still home with my parents for the next few months before I move out. And, you know, every time they come home with groceries, I basically have to lift the car into the driveway. Has that been the same thing for you where people just assume because just taking a look at you, they just assume that, you know, that you can help them out with stuff? It hasn't been too bad for me. And that's probably because I'm female, yeah. I guess. But um, no, it hasn't been that bad. No. Yeah. Um, I, it, what my work's very good. It's I work with main, all men, mm-hmm. so they've been really not really good about like I don't have to lift heavy boxes or anything. Yeah. They still are like ask us to do it, even though mm-hmm. mentally I'm like I can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, and then and that's awesome because yeah, for and for women, I mean, it's probably like, it's like fifty fifty where we get that fifty where it's like yeah, I'm still they still you know I don't get asked as much, but then we have other ones where like yeah, all the time. But for me, I mean, I have a double edged sword because I'm six three, so I mean, just just if you you see me walking down the street, they'd be like, oh yeah, tall guy can do it. So you know, every other weekend last summer, just friends hitting me up and just saying, hey Ryan, you want to come over? And, and I said, well, I don't want to come over and do it, but I'll do it. But you know, just got to the point where you know I always told them, just let me get my workout in first, and then I'll come over because I'm I don't want to get too tired lifting yeah. your stuff where I'm not able to get it in. But now, I mean, my favorite question to ask, and again, this is a multi million dollar idea for anyone out there. But when it comes to clothes for fit women, I always like to say <laughs> your clothing options can be limited. I mean, for men, they have their own different set of problems, and I go over that with them. But for women, I mean, I always like to say, and when when you said like the thing that grew out the most was your shoulders, I was like, okay, that's the one thing that I always like to say. If you have big, broad shoulders, dresses aren't normally your best friend. Jeans are another. <laughs> thing that we hear of all the time that can really just be a huge struggle what are some ways that you found that sort of compensate for the fact that your clothing options can be limited <laughs> it's been a struggle <laughs> especially being and an accountant I, too and working in an office setting yeah well my office is casual so i oh. get to wear i can wear my workout clothes okay. i get very i'm very lucky very fortunate <laughs> um i literally wear um stretch pants every day um i jeggings are like the greatest thing ever invented because they kind of look like they're jeans and dressy. So if I need to dress it up a little bit, I can. But jeans are the struggle. Shirts are a struggle. Mm-hmm. And it's because the women's shirts are made, you know, they're narrow cut here. Mm-hmm. And even if I, get a, if I get a bigger size to fit my shoulder, mm-hmm. then it doesn't fit here and I look like a box. Mm-hmm. So I struggle with that. So I try to get stretchy shirts or tight, tight fitting here. Mm-hmm. So everybody knows, like, I'm muscular and fit instead of just boxy. Yep. <laughs> um, but that's mainly, like, dress shirts. Mm-hmm. Button-ups, they're hard to come by. Mm-hmm. I don't have that many. And jeans, I don't have one pair. I ripped the last two pairs this summer, so because yeah. my legs grew up. But that's okay. Yeah, I, I mean, need, I want them to grow. So. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that you definitely have to deal with. So, yeah, everyone out there, you know, it's it's really, really hard to come up with those clothes. But I mean, it's definitely, definitely worth it for someone out there. If you want to get into it, make some make some clothes for healthy and fit people. Something you can make a lot of money on. But now moving on, I mean, I always love to ask, at what point in your journey did you say that you wanted to also help out others? Um, it was probably a couple of years ago. Um, a lot of people, I noticed a lot of people were catching on and messaging me privately on Facebook and Instagram about how I inspired them. Um, Some are doing shows now. Some people found me on, I used to have a blog. I have not updated it in quite some time. Time got away from me. Um, So people contacted me through my blog and wanted to make sure, first of all, that I was a real person and it wasn't fake because I had my transformation pictures on there. And they wanted to do shows and ask how to get involved with WBFF and things like that. Um, so whenever I realized people were actually listening and paying attention and watching me, and especially at my gym, it's kind of a small gym. And it has different locations, but it's, it's like we're a family. And they watched me transition from being 30% body fat to what I am now, which is roughly like 15 to 18 to show which is 8% back to this, you know, so they've watched my transformation and they have just um, reached out to me and that made me realize like, wow, I can really help people mm-hmm. if I start and get my certifications and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I just got certified last May in this past May. So I'm just now starting out trying to get my feet wet in the online training world, but I'm hoping to help a lot more other people. That's awesome. And what would you say as a trainer, the number one excuse that you get from people as to how or why they can't make that change and adapt that more healthy and fit lifestyle? Time. Yep. It's mainly time, especially moms. Um, I feel like a lot of women 
don't feel that they're they don't take their health important um, health as important and they want they're there to cater to their children and their husbands or wives or whatever significant others if you will and they just don't take enough time for themselves and then they feel guilty the mom guilt oh mm-hmm. and i remember because i remember like it was yesterday it will eat you alive mm-hmm. if you let it you yep. just have to let it go and realize that you're going to be a better mother and significant other um and you're going to live longer yeah if you change your ways oh yeah absolutely and i say that too i mean it's like you're going to live longer and you can enjoy more time with your kids and yeah i mean the mom guilt is one thing that i've heard of a ton and i always like to give an example though too it's like we've had nurses on the show that work like 14 15 even 16 hours a day and they're still able to get that workout in so it's all about how much you want it because we all live in the same 24 hour span and it's you know everyone i mean granted i will give some people the excuse some people really do generally have that that busy of a schedule where they literally cannot at, but I always would say, and this is not stalking or anything, but if you were to like follow someone around for one day and just log down like everything that they did in that day mm-hmm. and present it to them at the end of that day and say like, wow, I added up and you probably had like two or three hours worth of stuff when you were just like sitting around eating or doing something that wasn't really productive, that if you were to add that up, that's time that you could have spent in the gym. So yeah, I always say that, but yeah, every again, you know, especially with moms dealing with that mom guilt, that is a huge thing that, that I get all the time. But now, I mean, being a personal trainer as well, what is that experience like for you? I mean, I know you've just started, but when you're starting to see changes in your clients and you're starting to really help them out, what is that feeling like for you? Because we always see those posts about, you know, like what it's like for the client, you know, going through all these big transformations and changes, but what is it like for you as the personal trainer, just realizing that you, you have genuinely helped out someone better their life? I just get, I get excited. It like warms my heart to see that they're changing because it honestly, it makes, they're happier and I could see it in their face and they're more confident. And as soon as change, as soon as they realize that they see the changes, because as a person, like you won't see your own changes first. It takes somebody else to see them and then everyone to tell you. And then one day you wake up or look at a picture and compare that's why I make all my clients take progress pics. Yep. Um, then you'll realize, oh, wow, I've made a change. And it's just so conf- it's confident building. And to see them shine and walk around with a boost of confidence, it just warms my heart. It makes me- I wish everybody could walk around like that. A- absolutely. And now you're in the WBFF, which is different because we have a lot of MPC. We have a lot of different divisions. What differentiates the WBFF from a lot of other divisions? Because when most people don't know about the WBFF, how did you get into it? And what, what would you say really differentiates it from the other divisions? I got into it because uh, my coach at the time had just went and competed and he won his pro card. And the next show, like he was involved, and then he was able to hook me up with a posing coach and everything. So for me, I just kind of looked at it and then compared it to um, the other organizations, and I felt like it was the right fit for me. Um, what makes it different from what I've seen is it's it's more glamour. So it's world beauty, fitness, and fashion. So it's about fashion, and every category has the title model in it. So you're not only being judged on your muscles, your physique, you're being judged on your hair, your makeup, your face, your posing, your markability. Um, can they use you for marketing? Are you going to be a good fit? Um, basically, you're judged just like a model would be, and, but you have muscles. Mm-hmm. And the shows, um, their shows are a lot um, a lot more entertaining, yeah. if you will. Um, it's definitely a show. So you will never see us out in the audience in our bikinis, walking around, hanging out. You won't see us setting in the audience. We're always backstage because we're putting on a show for you. We're putting on a show for the audience. Um, so it sets it apart. It's very different. Um, I like it a lot. <laughs> I love it. Um, and it was the right fit for me. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that puts even more pressure, though, I think, on the competitor when you got to have your makeup right and you got to have everything right, not just mm-hmm. your posing and not just everything. So, I mean, that that just seems like it's even more of a challenge. And so, I mean, more kudos to anyone that does that because, I mean, just doing the normal bodybuilding is hard enough in and of itself. But, I mean, adding on the model part to it, I mean, that is just something that just seems like it's so difficult. But, again, I mean, I mean, anyone that goes out and does that, more power to them. But now we go to our audience favorite and my personal favorite podcast, a little questionnaire where we're going to ask Melissa here about a dozen or so questions that I ask all of my health and fitness guests and we're going to see how her answers stack up to everyone else that we've had on the show so for our first question what is your go-to workout song at the moment <laughs> my go-to workout song is actually right now currently is eminem fall Ooh. see you know 
I we we could have switched we could have switched generations because I'm more of an '80s where I like you know that old school like the, the cheesy '80s music where it's just it's so cheesy but you know I, that's what I do to work out. I mean the the Rocky Four soundtrack is on my iPod and I listen to at least one of those songs you know every time just because it's so cheesy. But I have a problem. So like I I luckily I have a little gym at home that I work out you know at 75 percent of the time. But when I do go to a normal gym, I'm one of those guys where you got to wait for the beat to drop before you before you get the workout in. So I might mm-hmm. be doing like a lat pull out and I might just be like this for like 30 seconds. I've had people come up to me. <laughs> I've had people come up to me and say like, "Hey, are you all right? Did you like pull out your back or something like that?" And I was like, "Oh no, I'm just waiting for the beat to drop." So I am known throughout my gym as the guy who waits for the beat to drop. But hey, you know, you know, I'll take it. But now, out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could work out with any celebrity, who would it be? Uh, hmm. It would probably have to be Daniel and Bailey. Daniel and Bailey. Yep. That is that is a good one. I I mean I honestly uh I so I went to college in Mankato in Minnesota and uh-huh. I was looking and some people were freaking out in Mankato like earlier this 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 fall and it was because she came down there for a day to open up one of the gyms that that they had down there in Mankato. So everyone was freaking out. I was like, "Oh yeah, damn. I wish I I wish I still went to school there because, you know, I probably would have been down there." But yeah, she's she's definitely a huge inspiration to to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But now out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could train any celebrity, who would it be? Hmm. Oh, that's tricky. Um, let me think. Wow, I'm on the spot. <laughs> Hence the name Didi on the spot. <laughs> that, that's true. That is yeah, true. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm sitting here wondering. No worries. Train if I could train any celebrity. Um, it might be, probably have to be Jennifer Aniston. Yes. I want to pick her brain and talk to her. <laughs> I would. I would say if I could get anyone on on the planet on this show, that she would be it. She would be the one guest if I had the all knowing power to anyone that's still alive. At least it would be. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, she's. Yeah, yeah that would be a delight. But yeah, she. What's would be, her? What's her trick for youthfulness, for lifelong youthfulness? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but she needs to write a book about it before she dies. So, you know, yes. every, everyone everyone just knows that. Because, I mean, yeah, I think she's about to turn like 50 and she still looks like she's in her mid or late 20s, early 30s. For sure. So it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But now, what is one item or one piece of food that you always need to have in your fridge? Um, one piece of food always in my fridge is sweet potatoes. That is that is good, believe me, and that's that's a lot different than the normal answer that we get of like you know the the, the usual like the chicken and the egg whites. <laughs> but I mean, the most surprising answer for me by far was mustard. I never knew that, but mustard, you know, oh, it's, it's zero in calories, it's zero in fat, so a lot of bodybuilders they just they just put it on their I chicken just to get a little bit on. of flavor. I have to use mustard. Mm-hmm. I only use it when it's fish week. Like mm-hmm. I'll go through my preps and for like three weeks I have to eat fish only. Yeah. So it gets a little boring. Uh, yeah. Mustard has been my lifesaver. Well, the best of luck for that because I honestly, I, I do not like mustard. But hey, whatever whatever works for the competitors, 100%. But now, out of all of your followers on Instagram, what is one thing that they'd be surprised to know about you if they met you in person? Hmm. I don't know. Um. Surprised about me. Let's see. Can I say one oh. thing I was surprised about you is that you're an accountant. That was surprising for me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I definitely don't have the accountant person, <laughs> the typical accountant personality. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe that or that I played soccer for most of my life. What position did or, you normally play in soccer? Way back when it used to be defense and now I've kind of transitioned to midfield. Is most people our age don't like to run, so I kind of just got thrown in there. I mean, yeah, they, they um, yeah, you, you took one for the team, definitely. I'd say for, <laughs> for sure. But now, I mean, if you had the all-knowing power to do so, what would be the one thing that you would want to change the sport about the sport of bodybuilding if you could? Huh. I would want to change the use of supplements. Yep. I want. I would like it to be. I would like everybody to be strict mm-hmm. and everybody to be tested. Yep. Not just certain organizations where you have to do a natural show. Um, I want, I want, I would want it all across the board. 
I mean, yeah, that is one thing that I hear a lot that, I mean, I couldn't agree more with. And unfortunately it's like, they're never going to enforce that, but yeah, definitely yeah. just, just the drug test and just making sure. Yeah. Because that's another thing too. It influences the people who love, who like the sport and who watch sport into thinking that that look is attainable without doing, you know, the supplements so that people then just get disappointed when they're like, Oh, I can't look like that unless I do something. So, you know, it's, that's definitely one thing too, that I hear about all the time and I couldn't agree more with, but now we go to the fun part of the questionnaire. So what was the last TV show that you binge watched? Um, honestly, friends, we watched all 10 seasons. So, um, don't freak out about this, but I have had on, and the podcast will be released in about two weeks. I had on the lady that played Ross's first wife, Carol, the lesbian. She came on oh, the yeah. podcast, and because I've been emailing her the last few months, and I've been telling her, you know, she started a charity, and I said, I'd really love to, you know, have you come on and just, you know, talk about friends, talk about your, your acting career, and we can talk about your charity, and then she she agreed to, and then we did it, and I just, you know, I, I hurled out, like, the 30 most frequently asked friends questions that I thought of, and so, yeah, I will definitely let you know when that one gets released, because that was a really fun awesome. one. That was a really fun one to do, yeah. She was an absolute great guest to talk to so when you said that i was like yep and for me i mean friends yeah friends in the office are probably tied for my my go-to tv shows to watch i mean they're they're like comfort food when they come on i mean it's just it's so good to watch those and yeah they, they're always guaranteed for a ton of laughs but everyone always has one what is a guilty pleasure movie that you enjoy a guilty pleasure movie oh <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. That's that's the first time we've actually had that come on the podcast. But I was waiting for that to happen because I, I knew eventually it would happen. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I, it took us to about our hundred and eighty fifth podcast, and now we finally got bring it on. Yeah, so, yeah it I is bet made... people are just not afraid to admit it. That well, that that's true. Probably. I mean, that's so. Uh, stick it. If you know that movie too, that's another gymnastics movie. I had one of the actors that played the actresses in that come on too, and we talked about that. But yeah, that's the only. So yeah, st bring it on. But yeah, that's the movie that I mean every cheerleader is basically watched religiously, where they can quote everything, to. And I mean, I I know some of the cheerleaders in high school that I had. I mean, yeah, they would quote that movie all day, and you'd just be like, okay, that's so annoying. But you know, you got used to it. But now, I mean, I I gotta ask, what is your favorite fashion trend of all time and least favorite fashion trend of all time? Oh, my favorite fashion trend of all time, of course, the 90s with the Chokers and the Doc Martens. Mm -hmm. I can't let them go. I still rock them. Yep. Um, <laughs> my least favorite trend. Oh, man. These, I don't even know how to describe it. But this, uh, the flowing, like the baggy stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I can't. It's, yeah. Yeah, believe me. We get that. my least favorite. Well, yeah, we get that all the time. And for me, I mean, both of mine, my favorite and my least favorite are both from the 90s as well. For me, I mean, being up in Minnesota with this temperature, flannel is going to be your best friend because, I mean, that's the one thing that's going to keep you more, most warm. So, yeah, flannel, especially right now. But for my least favorite, I mean, my dad used to rock one in the late 90s, and it, it was horrible. Fanny packs. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Yes. I always say this, though. Women can rock a fanny pack 100%. They're kind of what, I, that's why, okay, so that's why I love to say this because fanny packs, I mean, I see that with my dad and I see what's wrong. And I know that they're making a comeback. Women, you can rock as many fanny packs as you want, but guys, it's like, come on, dial it down a little bit. Yeah. And I always say if there's one thing that this podcast could ever accomplish is if it could stop the spread of fanny packs among men coming back again. I mean, that would be worth it. That would make my entire life, my life's purpose worth it just to stop because fanny packs, it's like, no, guys, what are you thinking? But now for our last question of the questionnaire that I always love to ask everyone, if you could go back in time and talk to the 18 year old version of yourself, what would be the best piece of advice you would give her? Oh man, the best piece of advice would probably be to start working out now, <laughs> start bodybuilding now, because then you can go on to win and be famous and, you know, do all the things I wanted to do. And here I am 40. I just started at 36. <laughs> Hey, you can if still... I would have done then what I know now, yeah. I mean... That's what, I mean, I'm, I'm 24 and I'm at that right now too, where I'm like, yeah, if only I would have been able even six years back, but yeah, you can still do it right now. I mean, you can still go on and be fake. I mean, yeah, you, you, I mean, we've had people that have started like at 50 that come on here and then it's like, so yeah, believe me, you have plenty of time on that. But now the final two questions that I love to ask everyone before we wrap things up. So what do you currently, do you have a date in mind of when you're going to compete next? Or are you currently just in a bulking phase or are you a cutting phase? What are you currently up to right now? And do you have a date in mind of when you're going to go on next? Um, I do not have a date in mind yet um, when I'm going to compete. I'm kind of taking the year to just figure to I'm – build, I'm building, but right now I'm cutting because I have a couple photo shoots mm -hmm. coming up. So I'm just kind of basically concentrating on doing shoots right now and 
building my body to like how I want it to be. Because mm-hmm. I struggle with keeping my lower and upper symmetrical. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to get to that point where, and I want to grow as much muscle as I can on my lower half. So that's what I'm hoping to do before I compete again. Well, yeah, and we wish you nothing but the best of luck in that endeavor. But now, is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my husband mm-hmm. for all his support and helping me through these competitions. I wouldn't have been able to do it without him and my family. Oh, yeah. And we, I mean, again, everyone, that is probably one of the biggest things that I could stress too if you're going to compete is you need to have a support system. I mean, we've had people that have tried to do it by themselves and 99% of the time it turns out to be a disaster. It has worked, you know, like once or twice, but that is the rare, rare case. So you need that support system to help you out. I mean, I cannot stress that enough, but again, we cannot thank Melissa Lancaster enough for coming on the show. Everyone, go and give her a follow down below. I will, I highly, highly recommend you go and check her out and just, just looking through some of her Instagram photos, you're going to be like, okay, I need to get off the couch and stop eating all these Twinkies and go to the gym and, you know, <laughs> get in better shape. So again. You guys, Melissa, we cannot thank you enough for coming on. You're an absolute great guest. Now enjoy staying. Now enjoy trying to stay warm in that 27 degree weather while I deal with it. <laughs> while I deal with this negative 27 degree weather. So, but the interesting thank thing you. is too. So it's negative 27 right now, but on Saturday it's supposed to be 40 degrees. So that is going to be with the wind chill. That's going to be like an 85 to 90 degree degree change wow. over like a, a, a period of three you guys days. Guys are so. going to be wearing shorts. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to be going shirtless. Yeah. At work, basically. Yeah. It's just going to be jeans and everything. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be great, but yeah. So I will, I will hunker down tonight. And if this podcast doesn't get posted, everyone, you know what happened to me. I perished in the cold winter trying to do my yard check, but if it, if it does come up, you know that everything's fine. But again, Melissa, we cannot thank you enough for coming on the podcast. Everyone go and give her a follow. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot signing out. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.